All right. Welcome, everybody, to another BDA Boxing Film Analysis. That's right, Film Analysis. We are back with the Film Analysis, backed by popular demand. You spoke, we listened, so we're going to give a couple of more Film Analysis here. Uh, and this one, we're going to be taking a look at Mike McCollum's 1986 fight against the murderers punching Julian Jackson, Julian the Hawk Jackson. Everybody's familiar with Julian Jackson now, thanks to YouTube and the highlight videos, the highlight reels of his uh, knockouts, fantastic knockouts. Uh, in order to be a good fighter, a great fighter, you need to be the total package. It's not enough to just have skills. You know, people have to say that, oh, skills pay the bills. But listen, if you don't have a chin and you can't take a shot, you're not going to make it to the top of the pound for pound list or be an all time great. I mean, you can may maybe be an all time great if you can <laughs> dock punches well enough. But I mean, you need to be the total package to be a guy that when people look at you and say, hmm, that guy, I'd put him up against any other fighter in the history of boxing. And uh, a lot of people couldn't get past Julian Jackson's power. Harold Graham couldn't do it. Terry Norris couldn't do it. Now we're going to take a look at how you would fight a guy like that. So if anybody out there boxes, amateur, you know, just for fun or professional, whatever, this is what you're supposed to do when you find a, a puncher. So hopefully you can pick up a couple of tips from this fight that we're going to be taking a look at. Mike McCollum, of course, they call him, they called him the body snatcher. And they didn't call him that for no reason. This guy used to go to the body with mean intentions. And you know I love me some body punching. So this is a perfect fight to analyze. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so we're going to take a look at the fight here. There you had Mike McCollum on the on the left. Julian Jackson with the afro on the right. Mean stare down. Think, okay, so McCollum was from Jamaica and uh, Jackson was from somewhere in the Caribbean. So this is an inter-Caribbean fight. St. Thomas, Virgin, U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay, I'm looking that up right now. Uh, at this point, both guys coming up. Good wins, good records. And uh, it's an interesting fight. It's a short fight. That way we're not going to stay here all night. But it's an entertaining fight, jam-packed, full of things, little things to look at. And number one thing, everybody knows when you're fighting a puncher, you have to be res def uh, defensively responsible. But you cannot run around the ring either. If you give too much respect to the puncher, that's what the puncher wants. The puncher is used to having his way with guys and intimidating them. You have to be a bully. You have to stay in there a little bit and, and trade a little bit. Yes, you're going to... Listen, you're going to get punched either way by a puncher and you're going to feel his shot. And the problem with a guy like Julian Jackson, by the way, look, just look, take a look at his fights, is he could hit you on the chin, the temple, the forehead, a lot like Deontay Wilder's power. He would, he just had to touch a little bit and you would get wobbled or go down. So that's the type of puncher that Julian Jackson was. So right away here, he jumps on McCollum. McCollum clutches him with a little left hook and then clinches, gets out of the ropes. And there you see him trading, but he's he's gonna he he did something that he kept doing throughout the fight, which is weaving, ducking and weaving under Jackson's artillery. There you see Jackson throwing a right hand, and it's an interesting little thing here because it's right in the first round. There, there you know there, the nerves, the adrenaline, no feel out run here. Jacks uh, McCollum staying right in front of of McCollum staying right in front of Jackson. So he parries the jab. He sees Jackson dipping, which is something he he used to do a lot. He would dip before he throws the right hand. He loaded up on it. So McCollum sees it coming, he rolls with the right while keeping his left hand up there and dipping down and then countering to the body. That's the great thing about McCollum is he would counter with uppercuts to the body, taking little bits of energy out of you. And then he came back with the jab. See here? Boom, boom. Right uppercut, left hook, and he comes right back with the jab. There you saw him counter with the right uppercut again. And this is another little thing he does. You're gonna, I'm, I'm not going to be able to pause it all the time, but keep looking at this throughout the, the highlights we show you here little steps back see there and then coming right back with the jab popping that jab popping the jab making sure to duck and weave right after the jab because that whooshing <laughs> big right hand you have to keep your left hand up now see see there that's the problem here you have to be very careful when you're rolling with right hands because see McCollum ducked under that he, he leaned back from the hook and then he dips down because he's expecting the right but he's a little bit too open here. His temple is open, so he takes a boom, right hand right there. And those it's those short right hands that could really do some damage. But McCollum takes it, counters with the right uppercut, and then ducks right underneath, and he comes back with the jab. Unfortunately, here's what happens. The inevitable, he gets caught with a left hook, and he gets wobbled. Jackson smells blood, tries to go for the finish. McCollum doing a good job of weaving, and then smothering Jackson's work. Again, that, see? Staying at that low angle with your hands down, coming back up, and boom, he catches a short, stiff, short right hand. That's the only type of right hands that Jackson threw, by the way, stiff, short right hands. But Macy was able to stay up McCollum, but then again, he had a good chin. 
Here you see him jabbing, jabbing, keeping that jab a little bit low. See when he come, he, he after he takes it back, he drops a little bit. So Jackson looks at it and tries to counter with the right, but then there's a second line of defense from a column, which is his feet. See here, boom, and he takes a little step back and evades the right hand. Here again, weaving, 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 and countering with. Did you see that he countered with the right uppercut? So he's not he's staying in front of Jackson, but he's not just staying. His head is not staying right here on the same axis. And if he's going to trade, he's not just trading again with the head on the same axis. He trades and then he weaves or ducks. There again, using his footwork to stay out of the way of the right hand. There he ducks. I mean, he slips. Sorry. He rolls the right hand and then he counters with a right uppercut to the body. And then he comes back with the jab, catches the right hand on the head. He got caught with it, but then he takes a step back and counters there. Beautiful move here. He's expecting the right hand. Hold on a second. Here. He expects the right hand, dips to his left and takes a mean old left hook to the body and then at the same time he slips or rolls rather with the incoming left hook there you see him trading there going to the body rolls with the right hand comes back with the right up to the body and then with a jab again there right hand left right up i mean we're gonna take a look at this in slow motion here weaves under the right touches jackson a little bit to the right but he didn't have no momentum there to do too much damage comes back there now you see Jackson says, you know what, I'm going to give him a taste of his own medicine by going to, to, the, to the body. And McCollum was expecting a, a right hand upstairs, but he still rolled with it, has the momentum and the leverage to throw this. Boom. He lifted, he lifted Jackson off the ground a little bit. Did you see that? Boom. And then the left foot. Boom. Throwing those shots with meaning. And then he, he ducks under the, the, the hook. Again, he's trading, but he's doing it in a... He's taking a risk considering he, he got hurt earlier. But that's what you got to do against a puncher. You can't run away. Give him a taste of your own medicine. That's because McCollum is confident. See there? Trading and ducking. Hooks to the body. Taking that energy away from McCollum. And there here's the knockdown. Now you see the knockdown here. Jackson wasn't expecting that short left on the inside. See that? He clipped Jackson. McCollum clipped him with nice short left. Jackson didn't see it coming, couldn't see it coming, and he got dropped. So now he's buzzed. And here now McCollum turns into the Predator, throwing his combinations. Look at this. Going to the body as always, changing angles. Don't worry, folks. We're going to take a look at this in slow motion. So he leads with the left foot, right hand. Boom, boom. Now take a look at the short steps he's taking. You, you often see too many punchers or guys, when they hurt a guy, uh, their opponent, they jump right on, on them and they, they allow themselves to be smothered and clinched and uh, they waste their, their momentum. My column's not falling, pray for that. It takes one step, jab, jab, see a little step there, still in range, not too close. And then he's conscious enough of the incoming fire. He knows Jackson's going to try to fight back. Jackson's got hard. So he rolls with the right. They trade punches there. My column going to the body. Then he goes upstairs, rolls with the right again, catches him with this beautiful two see he rolls with the right jackson as always investing a lot into his shot so he overshoots the runway there and he gets caught with a counter right uppercut and then a beautiful left hook now he's stunned mccollum says this continues and then this is my favorite part of the fight here left uppercut Ooh, look at how he changes angles here nice little subtle change of angles jackson looks like he's drunk see how he just stumbles forward and boom he stumbles forward. He didn't expect McCollum to change angles like that. And the, oh, right on the solar plexus. That had to have hurt. Now he's buzzed both upstairs and downstairs. And McCollum still, see how he dips down after his punches? He's conscious of incoming fire. Still leading to the body there with both hands, both sides. Look at this. And notice how McCollum is throwing shots. Hook, hook, uppercut, uppercut, hook, uppercut. He's not just throwing hook, hook, hook or straight, straight, straight. He's mixing them up. Watching his opportunity, stepping back, still conscious of the incoming fire, not getting too close nor too far away either. He's watching everything here, seeing all the openings. And there you see him with the overhand rights. Dugs another shot there. Here he goes to the body with a couple of sh uh, shots. Triple. And now here's the ending. Now this ending a little bit too premature, some might say. But you're going to take a look at the beautiful finishing skills of McCollum. You can't blame the referee. You're going to see why. So he digs in with a right hand. Dogs the incoming uh, left uh, counter. He has um, Jackson there on the ropes. Overhand right. 
and see how he changes angles here with the, the left foot. He left foot and he goes to the right a little bit, shifts angles, right uppercut, jab, jab, overhand right. And see, he he changed angles before, right? So jab, jab with the right hook. He changes angles again, goes to the right. Now uses the momentum and then springs a left uppercut and then a left hook. Those two shots snapped Jackson's head back, and that's where the ref started like panicked a little bit and said, you know what, I'm gonna stop this. But you can't blame the ref. I mean, when you see that. Yeah, maybe premature stoppage. Maybe Jackson could have recovered. I don't know. All I know is uh, McCollum did a beautiful job. The beautiful sequence you just saw. So the things that J McCollum did was he stayed right in front of Jackson. He didn't run away, but he stayed in front of him while weaving, ducking, staying defensively responsible, and he would counter right after the, the defensive moves. He wouldn't just go on the defensive. He would always take a little counter here, a little counter there to take Jackson's body away take his power away and let him know that he was in there against a live fighter and of course McCollum obviously had power because he was able to drop Jackson in that second round that's the by the way that's all that the fight uh, that was the full length of the fight two rounds not that I mean I skipped obviously a couple of parts but it was just a two round fight so you don't need 12 rounds to have a great fight can be two can be three Marvin Hagler and Tommy Hearns proved that so that's how you do it that's how you handle a puncher um don't run away you gotta you gotta stick there stay there and show a couple little balls you know show that you got balls and skills so guys let us know what we got right what we got wrong don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, tell us which fights you want us to analyze next you know make some um, suggestions and we'll see you in the next one folks thanks for watching